So Max, thanks for bringing the uh, the car down. Can I call you Max? Because it's Maxime. Yes, right? Maxime, Max or Lem. It's okay. up to you. So Maxime, um, it's not a name you hear often in the UK. So I'm guessing no. you come from abroad. Yes. It's I'm not from... just the number plate over here that gives it away. Yes, Belgium, French part. Okay, cool. Okay, nice. So, um, so I guess we better explain our audience how we got in touch. So you sent me a message on Instagram yes. saying you were in the UK um, and sent me a picture of the car and I was like, okay, that's super cool. He's clearly over here for, uh, for a good old road trip. Um, let's bring him in. Like, it's awesome that Instagram can connect people in that way. Yes, to be for fair. sure. Yeah, that's yeah. the way I, I travel, basically. Yeah? As I did with you, I do it with other people. Like the Porsche community is really strong. Yeah, yeah. So it's a pretty good thing for me to travel with Porsche and meet other owners, collectioners and everything. Yeah. That's how I do it. Okay, that's really cool. So what, you decide where you're going to go and then on the way you send messages to people as you go? Yes. That's really cool. Most of the time, like we have a big events and then before, after the events, we travel around, yeah. meet some Porsche people and the best roads, the best restaurants, whatever we can do. Because mm. I think the, the way I came across you before or, or in the first place was, uh, was it an orange 911? Yeah, the, the yeah. orange tangerine 911. So you SC. also have an air cooled yes. SC. Yeah, that's a really sure. cool car. Which is like yeah. more interesting to drive, I think. Yeah. Because with this, you are way, way too faster. Have a short amount of time, but yeah. yeah. Two wheel drive though, with this much horsepower, I'm sure it's quite interesting anyway. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I mean, there's so much to talk about with the car. I'm trying to think where we start. I guess we start with the basics. This is a GT2. Yes. 997 generation. What year is the car? So it's 2008. So what is that? Is, was there a Gen 1 and a Gen 2 with the So GT2? there was Gen 1 and yeah. the only Gen 2 was the RS with okay. 500 uh, yeah. cars. So how much, how much horsepower did these have? So it's 530, mm -hmm. but it's tuned to RS spec. So right. it's 620. Jesus, and that's all driven through the rear wheels? Yes. With how big are the rear wheels? Um, they are wide. 325s, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's going to help to get the power down. I wonder if that's wider than the turbos. I'm not sure about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe it's the same. Maybe the same. And I see you're running Michelins, um, <laughs> which is always good in our book because one of our sponsors is Michelins, and we're very big fans of Michelins for various different reasons. Um, okay, cool. And um, I guess the, the obvious, obvious thing is the color of the car, because this is obviously not the factory color. No, no, it's fully black, like the presentation car. Mm -hmm. And then we so ended So the launch up... car was black, was the last yes. black car, was it? Okay, cool. Um, and so this is, this, is a, this is a wrap, yeah? Yes. Okay, nice. And you've gone with like a, like a matte green, it's yeah, kind it's of an army military, feel to it. military matte green with yeah. this like camouflage or camo for like everything. That's cool. So what was the thought process with, um, with the, the military, with the, this kind of camo feel to it? The joke about it is that I bought it like this. Okay. The guy was selling it fully black. Yeah because he knew he was not going to sell it like this. Right. And then I called him, I talked about the car, and then he told me, okay, yes, now I have to tell you something. Yeah. It's not like you saw it on the picture. So okay. he sent me like two random pictures, but like it looked really bad on pictures. Yeah, yeah. And then once I, went, I was in front of the car, I was like, hmm, feels better, could be fun. Yeah. I told him, okay, I'm taking it like this. He made me a discount because, I mean, it's, you have to pay to remove it at yeah, some yeah. point. So, so it was already green and wrapped yes. when you bought it, right, right? I mean, I was thinking about buying it black, like the presentation card, yeah, that yeah, was yeah. the point. Yeah. And then I ended up having this. Yeah. Then on a joke with some friends, I ended up putting the tent because I realized even on GT2 and GT2 RS, you still have like everything yeah. that you can put like roof racks and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Putting the roof tent for a joke for one week. And then it's been almost two years traveling like this now. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's definitely not a joke anymore, I'm guessing. Yeah. <laughs> so with the car being, uh, the thing is, is I've never wrapped a car before, and I'm sure some of the people out there are going to be wondering, like, is there any, is there any risk to damage of the paint when you take the paint, when you take the wrap off? Uh, there's only two ways it can damage the paint. Yeah. If it's, you, you keep it way too long. Okay. Because there is like some metals in it, so it has to breathe at some point, if we can right. say it like okay. this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the skin. Yeah, yeah. And the other way, if it's the car had just been painted mm -hmm. and you put the wrap straight on it. Yeah, it hasn't had full time to yes. cure. Okay. So what is the process of taking it off? I'm guessing they use a lot of heat. Yes. And then, but not obviously too much because you don't want to blister the paint either. Yes. Otherwise, it's pretty easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really cool. 
Yeah, I mean, it, it certainly stands out. You just don't see GT2s and with a wrap like this. Most people keep them very, very original. So to see one yes. that's been modified in this way... Um, and even the GT2, unique. like, on the road, you never see them. No, that's I've true. I've only seen one. Yeah, so. yeah. No, it's true. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what, the wrap's been done incredibly well. Yeah, it's I mean, been a long walk, it, like, because the, the spoiler is so special on the GT2s. It's not like the new cars. Yeah. It's one piece, so they have to go everywhere. It's multiple pieces, as you can see here on the intakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's uh, an incredible job, yes, for sure. Yeah. And so that looks like it's all CAD design with a, with a little bit of hand cutting. That's really cool. Okay, nice. So what other modifications are there to the car? So there's, we'll get to the roof box, yes, but there's, sure. you said you, the engine's been tuned. Yes. Um, so was that done on, under your ownership or by the previous no, owner? No, just uh, before. Okay, previous owner as it's well. It's been done in 2010. Oh, so it's it a didn't stay like a long, like fully stuck. So, so what, it, what is it, just a little bit more boost? Is that yes, what they tune so, into it? Yeah, a little bit more boost. We have like, so as I said, RS spec, so 620 horsepower. Mm -hmm. 901 newton meters, oh, which is yes, that's yeah. the crazy part. Yeah, I have a um, complete acroprovic line, okay, which is which make it a bit louder yeah. than a normal GT2 or turbo, yeah, yeah. which is way better. Mm -hmm. I feel like at this point, with the, the acroprovic line, it's the best like of both worlds, yeah, because traveling with a GT2 RS from those generations, it's pretty, it gets pretty loud, pretty loud easily. Mm -hmm. And on the opposite side, if you drive a 997 Turbo or even GT2, it's not that loud when you want to play with the car. Yeah, yeah. So I'm in between. When I'm playing with the car and entering the Turbo many times, it's loud. When I'm not on the Turbo, just cruising, it's not loud. Yeah. So, it's so best you don't get any us. drone on the motorway, nothing like that? No. That's Actually, great. when I'm cruising, really this one is making more noise. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. And um, yeah, I can imagine, to be fair, looking at it. And uh, so the Acropovic exhaust, is that a titanium system? Because like, yes. they're famous for their titanium yes. systems. Actually, for yeah. the RS, it's complete titanium after yeah, yeah. what? So okay. it's not like, it's a GT2 RS upgrade, if we can say that. Right, right. And is there still a valve in the, in the exhaust? No, there is no valve. Yeah. So it's and would there be a valve from factory? I don't think so. No, I'm not sure. Maybe on the RS, but yeah, yeah. on the GT2, no. Interesting. Okay, cool. And um, I'm guessing the what's called you you did you did you put the exhaust on or was that done no, by the everything in 2010? Okay, fair enough. Yeah. So I'm guessing the tune was done with that exhaust in mind, mm -hmm. and a lot of the power, extra power, came from the exhaust. Yeah. Yeah. Really cool. Okay. I mean, like what's called when you look at it from the back, it doesn't look like um, it's been modified. I mean, maybe the angle of the exhaust is is a little bit different to standard. No, it always came it's like always this. Came out on a point. That's what I really liked on GT2s. Yeah, it yeah. came like this. It's not straight and. Okay, cool. Yeah, and you can just see the little Acropovic yes. logo there. Yeah, they tend to do a lot of exhaust systems for the modern stuff. I don't think I've ever seen anything for the classics. No. Um, Acropovic, but everyone bangs on about the, uh, the quality of the sound and the quality of the systems. Yeah. Do, you, do you know where they're made? Uh, no, Germany. Is it Germany? Germany or... I, don't I, know. Thought, I thought, for some reason, in my head, I'm thinking an Eastern European country. But yeah, maybe, maybe Poland or something like this. But yeah, yeah. That's really cool. And has the car been lowered at all, or is this the standard nope. hard? No, it's standard hard. Right, well. But I've had it um, a lift, nose lift, because uh -huh. the nose lift only came on 997.2. Mm -hmm. And honestly, uh, yeah, it's complicated without the nose lift on right. with this car, because I have way too much space in here, as you can see, yeah. if you scratch it on the lips. And me, I mean, when I bought it, like the, the first owner had like some, so from Porsche, he bought like three lips. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, I better buy a nose lift than buying lips, then lips, then lips, then yeah. front lips. And, uh, yeah, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, I can see it's got a few scuffs. But I guess, like, the wrap protects it. Yes, um, I mean, a bit more than the when it's too much, no, but... Yeah, yeah. That's really cool. Okay, nice. And you've got the, the wheels are in black. Yes. Right, let's get to the elephant inside the room. <laughs> so we've got the roof box here. Yes. And so how does it work? You've got these... These mouths, are these from Porsche? I see yes, Porsche so I used to have like the standard tool one, as you can see, it was too wide, yeah. but it's, I mean, it's fine, it's just the wrap. And then I got upgraded with the, the official Porsche one, which make it more easier, which make it easier for the tent, mm -hmm. because with the standard one, they were at the same height. Ah, yeah. So, and since it's a Porsche, it's going to be lower here yeah. than here. Yeah. So the tent was a bit like this. Okay. Now that this one is higher than this one, they are at the same height. Yeah, yeah, Which that is makes way sense. better. And so that's, um, that's uh, standard equipment you can get from Porsche, or Porsche yes. part number, the you whole lot. You can now get everything from Porsche, the roof tent and the roof. And the roof tent. Yes. Right, fantastic. Okay, that's really cool. 
Let's move around to the other side, because yes. we'll have a bit more space. It's a little bit tight on this side, and there's a reason why we've parked the car a little bit offset, which we'll get to in a minute when we flip it open. But um, yeah, no, okay, right. Really cool. Yeah, because I, I, I've seen that Porsche have done a lot of um, early generation um, KN, what yes. you call it, um, conversions. Yeah, of they, they've, yeah. they've got a lot of roof boxes and so on, so it is clearly something they're pushing. And there's, um, there's a guy called um, Brock. Yes, Brock, 996 yeah, yeah, Road yeah. Trip. So um, he's a Canadian, I believe. And, American, uh, I think so. Is he American or is American, he American? Okay, maybe yes. I got it wrong. Okay. Anyway, he, lovely guy. I met him a few, yeah. a few last month. And um, yeah, he's, he's, he's got a 996 generation C4S, I think it is, yes. with a roof box as well. Um, yeah, well, with a, with a roof tent. Okay, cool. And so this is available from Porsche as well? Yes. And that's made by Porsche? Yes, I think so. Or is it made for Porsche? I mean, it's made for Porsche and it's branded yeah. Porsche for sure. Okay, nice. Yeah, so you've got the deck out there. Okay, cool. And then at the front here, we've got um, some rally lights. That's me. That's not from Porsche. That's not from Porsche. And that says Automoto. So what's the purpose of those? Just a little bit more, a little bit more light? Yeah, more light, more style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay, cool. We just had the them like two days ago. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Nice. So wh how do you switch them on? Is that just a switch on the inside? Yeah, yeah. You have to actually, we still have to put the, all the cables to go to get into the cars and then otherwise it's either when you push like the the bright light yeah. on and it's gonna come on. At okay, the same so time. it's wired into the, the yes. wired into the car. That's really cool. It's either that or you can put a switch. But here, Okay, sorry, it, sorry, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just have to do all the cable management once I, I come back home. After oh, the I understand. So it's not connected. No, yet. I have to connect okay, them cool. once I'm home. Right, got you. Yeah, I'm trying to think how you would get the wire inside the cabin. I'll see. Yeah. The good thing is, is since I have uh, also a Cayenne Trans Oh yeah. I can take everything and put okay. everything on the Cayenne. Yeah, and yeah, it's nice. going to be easier for the wiring because yeah. I can go uh, with the trunk. Mm. Yes, true. Yeah, I cannot. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I don't think there's much you can do, is there? Going through the weird window. Well, you don't want to ruin the seals on the no, window. No, no, for you? sure. I'll see. Yeah, yeah. I guess the only thing, one way of doing it would be piercing a hole through the roof, but that'd be a bit nah, of a shame. I'm not doing this, yeah. for sure. <laughs> okay, cool. And I'm, I'm surprised you haven't been tempted to wrap the roof box of the same color as I the car. I should probably. Yeah? I should probably try it, for sure. Nice. So aerodynamically, you were saying this creates a lot of uh, wind noise on the road? At some point, yes, like over 100, uh, 110 yeah. kilometers per hour, it starts to make a bit of noise, but you, yeah. you, you speak louder and you put the music louder and it's fine. <laughs> but under that, you don't feel anything. And it's not like you're, you're feeling it on, on mm -hmm. the highway or whatever. Most of the time, like we tell each other, when we drive with my friends, we are like, hmm. We don't feel like there is a tent. Oh, yeah. Interesting. So um, this is, and, and you're saying now you've had it on the car for two years, so that clearly means you've been using it. Yes. So tell me a little bit about your road trips um, that you've done with it. So we started uh, the whole coast of the Netherlands. Right, wow, okay, awesome. It was pretty fun because it was during the winter. Uh -huh. I mean winter, it was like blue sky, but cold. And it was quite fun because yep. we are like, Sunrise, sunset, sunrise, sunset, like for many days. Nice. We took it on the Macan. We did the, this winter, we did um, minus 14 in the snow. Yeah, that was fun. When you say we did, who's that? With my friends, with my, uh, friends? yeah. So two of you can fit in there? Yes. And with the Macan, we went for three. Three? So two uh, in the tent and one in the trunk. Jesus. I'd rather be, I mean, you know, I, I like my own space, but when it's minus 14, I'd like to, uh, yeah. having a buddy is probably quite nice to keep you warm, maybe. Yes, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, awesome. With the GT2 and the tent, I also did right now, like uh, UK and Wales, mm -hmm. and I did many times France, like uh, south of France, and also Le Mans Classic, okay, two nice. times in a row, uh, yeah. sleeping on the track, yeah. which God, was pretty fun. That must be pretty hot, though. Yeah, Le Mans Classic. It's pretty cool. Yeah, so like you've a gone lot of from, people and Le Mans Classic. I'm trying to, I, I've been to Le Mans Classic a few times and the temperatures up there, we're talking like what, 30 degrees, something like that? Yeah, depending on the years. Last year was a bit hotter, but like, yeah. yeah so, this you've year was had, so you've had this tent in minus 14 all the way to plus 30. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> I've, got, I've got to say, I'm a little bit of a princess. Call me old school. Oh, maybe, I don't know, call me old maybe, but um, 
Yeah, I quite like my comforts, and, yeah. and when I go to the more classic in these places, I'm done with tents and so on. So I am full of admiration for you for, uh, for roughing it up. So yeah, fair play. I mean, cool, cool. most of the time, when we sleep in the tent on a road trip, we have like some really long days. Mm. So we just end up going in the tent, sleeping straight forward, straight ahead. Like. Yeah, yeah. It's not like you're not tired, you want to work or edit, on, edit some pictures, videos. Yeah, yeah. You just get in the tent and you sleep. And so, is it, is it, so uh, when, when you've got a, a tent on the roof like this, because I, I don't know anything about this kind of thing, but like, when, would, you, would you, where do you park up to sleep? Like, Depends. Anywhere and everywhere, or do you have to go specifically to camping places? Do you get told to bugger off every so often? My favorite thing to do is either going to meet some posh per person like yeah, yeah. in the community and sleep around their place, or like if they have some recommendations to where to sleep. Mm. Or my favorite one would be to sleep like when I feel I'm alone in the world, like yeah. in the middle of nowhere. That's okay. why we just went in the whales and we were like, whoa, yeah, yeah. there is nobody except us and sheep. Yeah, yeah. Because the thing is, it's like what's called most, most of the time when you're camping or if you go to a campsite, you've got some facilities. But if you don't go to a place where there's a campsite, you've got nothing. Yeah, we don't, we've got nothing. And I guess every two or three days, we go from places where we have something we take, okay. can take a shower, etc. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fair play. Yeah, because I mean, even when you're caravanning, um, you know, those things have like, have loos and showers and a little kitchenette and everything else. I mean, this is properly roughing it. Yes. Yeah. There's kind of a juxtaposition in some ways, actually, when you think of like, you know, in theory, this is, this is okay, it's a sports car and everything else, but it's also a luxury item. You know, it's not, some, it's not something that's necessary. It's a, it's a sports car, you know. And then on the other side of it, you've got this, this dichotomy of, of a real roughing it nature yeah. that you get with what's called with sleeping rough on the roof of a Porsche. That's the funny part about it. No, it's really cool. I've got, like I say, like I'm too much of a princess really for that kind of stuff, especially now. Um, I didn't think I would like life. it. But um, yeah, fantastic. I think I'd do it a couple of times, but I don't think I'd have kept it on the roof for two years. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's easy to remove, That's to awesome. be honest. Like, yeah? I can remove everything and yeah. go, go on track or like drive a bit sure. more. Yeah, yeah, nice. So should I open the tent? Mm, I don't know if I want to get to that yet, actually, because we've got the interior to talk about. Yes, for sure. I don't think there's going to be a huge amount. Um, so we'll, we'll get to the tent. We will get there. But uh, yeah, let's have, a, let's have a quick look at the interior, if that's cool. Yeah. So is there much that you've done in here at all? So we have the bucket seats, like from the fully carbon bucket seat from the 4-liter. Uh, what's modified is the, ah, so the these, steering wheel. Sorry, sorry. So yes. these wouldn't have come, these would have only come in the 4 litre, they wouldn't have come uh, in the 2 They could come as a club sport. Yeah. Since here it's not a club sport, you can have comfort seat. You can okay. see it on the other side because you still have like the, the button to choose like the position of the ah. seats. So, so it is was this modified. something that you did? No, we did it, be, it, was, did, it was done before. Okay. So really, actually, what's, what's quite good about this is it has a lot of modifications that you would have wanted yourself. Yes, actually yeah. it's better than what I would have expected yeah, or yeah. what I would have done because sure. I would it. have never come up with like something like this with yeah. wrap and everything. Yeah. It's interesting because like sometimes there's something to be said about like having the car yourself and doing all the modifications yourself. But having said that, if someone's, someone's done them properly and invested the time and so on, you know, what's called actually it's the residual value, sorry, the the better value proposition is actually buying a car that's already been fully sorted. Yes. So in some ways, yeah, yeah. brilliant. Okay, cool. And what's cool about these buckets is they, they still recline, don't they? Yeah, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can still get access we to are the back. We have something. That's the, the, the one thing we are happy with. It's not a club spot, is that we have some space. Yeah, yeah, You yeah. just have to take care about the carbon fiber. We don't want to scratch it. But yeah. otherwise, we have our batteries, we have our stuff. We have everything we need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this road trip you're on at the moment, um, you came over for the Festival of Speed, then you've gone over to Wales. Yes. How many weeks are you travelling? We are travelling nine days here. Nine days. Okay, so this is nine days worth of luggage for two people. To be fair, like what's called, okay, I didn't do it with a roof tent on the, on the top of my car, but I did, um, what was it, three, three weeks with my now wife um, through Italy with three weeks worth of luggage and a little mini schnauzer in, in the footwell. So, you know what, Porsches are pretty cool when it comes to the amount of storage space they allow you. When you go, when you think of like behind the rear seats plus the boot, there's actually a lot of storage yes, space. Yes, for sure. Yeah. More than in a Ferrari or something like this. Yeah, definitely. And when you've got your missus, not to stereotype, but my one does pack a lot. 
and um, three weeks of luggage is a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, yeah. I and we didn't imagine. have any air conditioning. We went from Bologna at 45 degree heat. That's a different story. Anyway, <laughs> um, so what else is there? You were talking to me about the steering, steering wheel, wheel. cut you off. So it's a multimedia steering wheel mm -hmm. in leather, but there is Alcantara and it's cut on the bottom. As you can see, it's not fully as oh, a cycle. Yeah. So here it's a flat bottom steering yes. wheel, yeah? Okay, that's really cool. And like so that's not a standard standard equipment? No. Uh -huh. that's, I mean, it came with a leather multimedia steering wheel, but it's modified then with the Alcantara. I see, it's been retrimmed with the Alcantara. Okay, cool, got you. And the door cards as well, I see that Alcantara. Yes. Um, as well. So would that, would that be standard as well? Yes. Yeah, nice. Either I, wonder, I wonder whether actually maybe trimming the center of the seats in Alcantara. Yes, I can. I mean, that's a cool good. part of those. It yeah. scratches, so I yeah. can just remove it yeah. and put whatever I want in it. Because I think that would tie it in. Because you've got leather in Alcantara. If you did that in, se in the center, green of Alcantara. Alcantara. Let's go all the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say it would tie it in with the with the black, but yeah, um, that's cool. Okay. And we've got the PCCM, please, the new one. So I have Apple CarPlay. Ah. Can we have a quick look at that? Do you want to switch yes, to the car sure. run so we can have a quick look? So we have a nice relationship, or a really good relationship with Porsche. Yeah. And, um, and they've told me a few times about this system, so it'll be nice to see it actually in operation. Yes. Let me jump in so that Tom yes, can get a little sure. bit closer. What's nice about this is that it, it looks like it fits, a, yeah. it looks completely standard. Yeah, you have no idea. Even the buttons are in commas retro, even though this is a relatively new car. So this is available from Porsche. Yes. Yeah. That's French. So I've got the um, so I've got the uh, small version. In uh, I've got my the small version in in one of my cars. Yes, for nine six four. Yeah, nine, it's three. absolutely brilliant. I mean, being able to have like ways, which is like. I think the best navigation app out there. Things like Spotify, you know, you have all your podcasts. It's absolutely fantastic. It just, it, it's, it's little, th like, it's, it doesn't sound like much, but something like this can really completely change. Especially for me with the road trips. Yeah, exactly. It's really important for yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. We have it multi-screen, so we have our music, yeah. we have everything. I mean, the advantage here is you've got a nice big screen in the, yes. in the classic stuff where you have quite a small screen. Yes, That's really sure. cool. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I love that. And then what's this? What have we got here? 360 camera. Okay. Um... So we can like record yeah. the front, uh, the side, the, the rear, everything. Right, wow. So is there a camera on the front as well? Yeah, yes. there is. Amazing. Okay, cool, cool. And then here you've got your tags. You can go through the tolls without having to get out of the car. Yes. Yeah. Which you can do actually as a Brit. If you're traveling abroad, um, you can log on to the website and actually get one of these yourselves. Um, as you're going through France, it's really helpful because it means you don't have to jump out the car and, and run around to the other side of the car to grab the ticket and go, which is more of a pain when you're, uh, when you're traveling in a right-hand drive car on the continent so, um, or in France. So I highly recommend that for those of you that do road trips and haven't got one yet in Europe. Okay, cool. Nice. And is there anything else on the interior? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I think we're good. Yeah. I mean, there is both packet, which is pretty good as well. Mm. And like... Small thing is that when you have the Bose packet, mm -hmm. you cannot have the GT2 badge on the rear. Oh. I don't get why. That's bizarre. <laughs> but yeah, that's oh. the only thing I'm missing in the car. Could it be because like having those Bose package philosophically means the car is heavier, so it's less GT2-ish? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's, that's the only thing goodness. that I would have to love is to have it like the, that. You can see it from here, like yeah. there's nothing now. Right, come on, let's open it up. Let's have a look. Let's, let's see go. how it goes. Should I explain all the process? Uh, yeah, why not? So Let's you have the keys, it. it's easier. Yeah. So nobody can like have fun and open the tent when you are parked somewhere. Yeah. Which is pretty useful. Mm -hmm. You don't want someone else sneaking into your bed while you're away. Then it's pretty easy for the first part. You just put it up. Nice, okay. Gosh, it's got the pour script on the side there as well. Yes. That's very cool. Then you use here. So you've got a platform there to yes. make it nice and sturdy. And then you just have to make sure that everything so, here is straight. So that was, that was what? One, two movements effectively. Yes. Plus the ladder. Yeah, it's not and a And click, you're done. And yeah, it definitely, beats, it definitely beats trying to get the pent tags out. Pent, yes, for sure. Um, no, the, uh, sorry, the tent poles out. 
And building a tent, yeah. Then I can like do the entry and I, I can also have some windows here yeah. that, I can, that I can open. That's cool. You got little windows there. Yeah, I like the, the Porsche down the side. You almost want this decal down the side of the car actually, just yeah. to tie it in. Yeah. And so do you have a mattress? Yes, the mattress is inside in two parts. I'm going to show you. And is that part of the is that part of the kit when you? Yes, it it's is part of it. And that's a good part about it. It's not like part of it completely. So yeah. I can change the mattress. I can have something wider. Or like. So they thought of everything, really, haven't they? Yeah. Actually, uh, as we talked about him earlier, Brock worked on the on it. Did he? To help oh. them like develop yes. a good system. Awesome. So nice. I can get it. You better check everything, otherwise. And last actually, time, there's a good amount of range I see on the ladder as well. You can make it longer so that when you pop the system on a KN or another car that's higher, yeah, yeah. but it works in multiple applications. Yeah, it's the same. And it's easy to remove. Yeah. I can just pop. Cool. Awesome. So you've got a mattress there and another one there. And, it and I have a, uh, a moon roof. I can open it so we have some more light. Moon roof. Here. Oh, uh, yeah. So and that's cool. The stars. That's really cool. Yeah. In fact, if you leave that open, then it will give us a little bit more light. So when we pull. Yes, because it's uh, like, so because filming. you have the hard top, you don't have much light than in a fully like mm. open tent. Amazing, really cool. And do you know what, Maxim? To be fair, after two years of you using this, it doesn't smell bad. No. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, yeah. And so, okay, there's a question for you, a practical question, one that the missus would want answered. If you wanted to wash this thing, can you unhook it and chuck it yes. in the washing machine? Yes. Fantastic, brilliant. So they've clearly spent a lot of time really thinking it through, developing the system, so it really, it really does work in a practical way. I awesome. think you can see it here if you want to remove everything. Yeah. Yeah, you can remove everything, yeah, for sure. Awesome. So what's the next road trip? It's going to be France for 20 days this time. 20 days. So okay. we are going from, Belgi some, from Brussels to Monaco, yep. and then going up until uh, Le Paris, then Le Mans. OK, Paris, Le Mans. Will you go through La Route Napoleon? Yes, for sure. Nice. From uh, Monaco yeah. to Lyon. Yeah, yeah. So have you driven that route before? Nope, just like a small part. Oh, you're going to so love it. It's, it's going to be great. Yeah, 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 especially in a car like this, it'll be absolutely incredible. Yeah. Well, dude, thank you so much for bringing the car in. Um, really, really interesting and quite inspirational, really. Um, you know, I, I absolutely love my road trips. I'm a big road tripper. Um, I certainly haven't got the brass that you have to rough it in the way that you do. Um, but huge amount of respect. It's fantastic. I think Thanks. that's awesome. Um, definitely a way to create some awesome memories. So, yeah, th there you have it. That's Maxim's car. Um, if you've got any interesting cars with uh, a really good story, then please give us a shout. Um, that's really what the channel is about. It's not necessarily about the cars, it's actually about the stories behind them. Um, so yeah, give us a shout, send us a DM on, uh, on Instagram. Cheers, dude. Thank you.